Hello everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is the artist guy who tries to draw and keep consistent in his intros, James Cork. And with me I have podcasting machine and planeswalker extraordinaire Norman Sanso. Oh my god, I face evil Bob. He's not fun to deal with. Oh, I know. Isn't he such a pain? I know. Uh, oh. <laughs> Ka, 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 guys, mm-hmm. yeah. what are you talking about? Oh, that's big, that thing. That, that's a big. Yeah. You, you had to have been yeah. there, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, I want to shoot Evil Bob in the face so many times. Yeah, but he's Galleon or what was it, Dreadnought, was it? Oh, man. Oh, it's Evil Ship of Doom. Mm-hmm. Not uh, and that's why this episode sucks, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, but still, Evil and Bob. <laughs> And today we're going to be talking about what about Discord, which is episode 22 of season 5, overall episode 113, written by Neil Dusedo. And yeah, I think you can already tell what we think of, uh, what at least what I think of this episode. Uh, uh, it's a retread of the story of, of the movie What About Bob, and it's about Twilight Sparkle coming back from a three-day we- three weekend finding that her friends have become very close to Discord and making her wonder if Discord is up to something or whatever. So, <laughs> as you can already tell by just by the intro alone, yeah, uh, I personally don't feel very fond of this episode, but what do you guys think of it? What do you guys uh, think of this one? Well, let's see. I'd say the whole thing hinges on the audience feeling the same discomfort as Twilight. We're not in the know. We're, we're wondering what happened and trying to puzzle it out with her. The difference is Twilight is stuck in this role and has to see it through to the end. We have the remote control to the TV or the close icon on our computer and can just stop watching. Unfortunately, that sense of frustration really hinders this episode. <laughs> that said, I actually like that there's some progression with Discord's relationship with the rest of the main six. And he actually may have done Twilight a service this time around. Hmm, a service? How so? Well, I, I don't know if I should save that until we get into the meat of the episode. Hmm. Oh, okay. Looking forward to hear what you have to say about that. Uh, what about you, Norman? I don't know. This episode is just strange with how they try to tell it, because I felt that, ooh, wouldn't it be nice to know what happened? They did try to do something that I thought of, but kind of gun it down for reasons. And, yeah, still. But, overall, this episode is just okay. It's in the okay part of the My Little Pony episode. Not bad, but not good. It's just okay. You know, I would uh, actually subscribe to that point of view, but I'm not entirely sure if I really like this episode. I had a lot of issues. I have a lot of issues with it. Uh, I, like Silver, I am going to go into it when we get into the meat and potatoes of the uh, of the whole thing. But I can already tell you, to me, this is the lowest point of season five. I, I know this is coming from the same guy who wrote Spike, uh, Princess Spike. <laughs> but really? even, yeah, yeah, it's the same writer. And oh, even wow. with that, I would rather watch Princess Spike rather than this episode, if only because there is a reference to Fargo in it. Like, it's not very well written and all that, but it looks very pretty and it's interesting to look at. I don't have that much coming from this one. And having said that about an episode that features Discord, it's kind of disappointing. So, since we're going to go through themes on on this episode in particular, I think we should talk about the big elephant. Oh, I mean the big Draconicus in the room. Let's talk about Discord and how he's characterized in this in this episode in particular. Because what you said is true, Silver. He has come a long way since that. Uh, I am going to have fun messing up with this pony's villain that we saw in season two. Now, has we? Has he? Well, in some ways, he's still having fun messing with them. Just now he's going along with the group rather than trying to break them apart. Hmm. But uh, this whole this whole episode starts off with him and Rainbow Dash gently trolling Twilight. (laughs) And I just thought, hey, up until this point, every one of the main six except Fluttershy has treated Discord with hostility. You know, they they never moved beyond the evil overlord. Even in uh, even in uh, make new friends but keep Discord. They all reacted to him with some uh, hostility. So here they are, sharing a good laugh, coming up and saying hello, just sort of enjoying his company. It's like, hey, have we finally cleared a hurdle? I think we have. But I do want to see how it all happened because 
it's a three day vacation for Twilight to sort out books. Yeah, three day weekend for Twilight to sort books, and then uh, Discord suddenly became good friends. Like, I want to hear that story. I I think that's the problem with this episode is everybody is interested in knowing what happened instead of what we got. Well, it wouldn't go that far. I don't think that anybody wants to really wants to get Twilight on the now about what's going on. <laughs> no, Twilight and doesn't need to know. We want to know. We want, yeah, we want to know. But what, and so does Twilight. She hasn't been there to talk with her friends. Though we're kind of like like uh, skewing away a bit. Like what? Uh, what about Discord? It's like, what about this guy? What about this guy that suddenly goes to reference Bob Ross out of all things in the planet? Uh, <laughs> well, Bob Ross is kind of a figure in the art community, and why not, right? This came at the same time that Twitch TV was hating the Bob Ross I episodes. Know. I want to think that Hasbro was the one hating those episodes, so they could make a reference to him. I Do know. well time. Yeah, I know. Very GG, well, well art. Good art. Let's build a happy little house. <laughs> Let's build a sort of house happy tree. <laughs> Though this, the, this episode does bring the, the, the paranoia in Twilight really well regarding how Discord is behaving because you wouldn't run Discord as far as you can kick him because he has had that, uh, mischievous ma- nature in the past already. I mean, he tricked Twilight, uh, when he was, w- uh, when she was with Cadence. With the plunder binds, he didn't say the truth until the Tree of Harmony was already restored. Uh, he wasn't all that trustworthy on uh, Keep Calm and Flutter on either. Like, it wasn't until uh, Flutter had shunned him that he decided to turn around and change his attitude. Uh, so, I think that Twilight's paranoia, it's kind of like, it's misplaced, but not misfounded. I think that she has reasons not to trust the guy. Although I would like to point out, Twilight has been gone for three days with no social contact. And Moondancer is off to the side saying, oh, so when you do it, it's a good thing. Well, in moderation at least, because she is the princess of friendship and she does need her personal time. Oh, well, we're going to get into the princess of friendship jazz and shortly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can, actually, we should talk about her because that is, when it, when it comes down to it, that is not much about Discord because the, the title episode it has his name on it, but it's not really about Discord. It's all about Twilight. Uh, it's all about how how she goes uh, from like enjoying her vacation and all that to becoming so, totally paranoid about what is Discord doing to her friends. Uh, true, true. I mean, the last time I remember when a, t- a character's name is in the title, we didn't get that character. Twilight time, remember? Well... Well, I got a little bit of it. We got the princess's sick burns. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, neither did you. <laughs> uh, she was good. She was very good in that episode. But uh, we, get see, but we get to see Discord having fun messing with Twilight, kind of rubbing it in her face that she wasn't a part of this. Oh, yeah. That was just mean. Very yeah, mean. Yeah, that's, that's perhaps another thing of the episode that makes me lose it. It's like... Like his motivation to mess around with Twy, I it it comes off as somewhat petty, which is maybe why I cannot side with Discord on this one. I mean, there is there is messing up with characters and there's messing up with characters, and what he's doing here, what, what are his motivations? And that's why I wonder, what do you mean exactly with what you said at the beginning of the episode when Discord was making a service to Twilight? All right, well let me let me phrase it this way: Discord is your classic trickster. Uh, archetype. Let's see here. I need to look this up, but I, as I recall, in uh, several American tribes, uh, they have the, I believe it's Coyote. It basically, tricksters of mythology, they, they teach you, they help you improve your life, but not by gentle means. They make your life awful. Basically, just to teach you what's really important, they take away everything else in the most brutal way possible. And it's not fun. And it's not a good laugh. This is the kind of trickster who thinks it'd be hilarious to put a bomb in your mailbox. <laughs> What's the yeah. logic in it? No, so no, there... no. You're you're absolutely right. Yes, I, I I agree with you. So here's Discord making Twilight kind of miserable, rubbing it in her face that she wasn't a part of this. But Twilight is insisting upon herself. Oh, I'm not jealous. I can't be jealous. I'm the princess of friendship. And my ears kind of perked up at that. It's like. 
I've said before, being a princess does not bestow qualities upon you. It does not automatically make you better as a person. You have to live up to expectations, but you that's something you've got to bring to the table. So here she is saying, my title shields me from any sort of flaw. Mm. And Discord's really pushing her, gouging her until she makes a fool of herself. And all her friends say, Twilight, it's okay to admit you're jealous. And I kind of thought back, what do you think Luna was telling herself before her fall? Could she have been saying, I'm so mad at my sister. Well, am I jealous of my sister? No, I am the princess of the moon, the night. I cannot be jealous. That is beneath me and my station. It's all her fault. So are you saying that Discord had a hand on helping Twilight from becoming Stopping Twilight from becoming Midnight Sparkle, princess of all friendship. I'm going to make you friends with somebody, even you are a shelter person. Very possibly. Mm. I, 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 can, I, can see, I can see where you're coming with this one, but I don't think that coming from Discord, though, that was, I think that was unintentional. That, that was like a side effect, because D- Discord cannot be smart enough to predict how the main six are going to react. Yeah, because he to didn't. me, he's just... He's just playing around with Twilight. Sorry, Norman, go ahead. I interrupted he did you. He mentioned something in near the end of the show where he did it to teach Twilight a lesson. At the same time, he found glee in doing it. So he kind of knew it. Like, I, I think maybe, okay, hit cannon insert here. So this could be one of his way to prevent what happened to Luna to Twilight. Probably. I'm not. Going, I doubt Discord is making any favors to anybody. Yeah, I'm just saying, because the logic, the leap in logic here does play out, because he's seen this before. He's seen the step that happening. So he wants, well, to teach Twilight a lesson at the same time in a very mean way that he knows how. He is the Lord of, Lord of Chaos or Lord, right? The Lord of Chaos. Yes, yeah. He is the Lord of Chaos. So he's just doing it for the fun of it like he's just he's he doing knows. it for the mine yeah he, he just loves it because well uh, i can turn these ponies into my slaves so I might as well have fun with them i don't think discord will turn ponies into slaves that's skin sombras well, like not he, discord well <laughs> he did kind of did something silly to them at one point or another but still come on it's discord he discord them <laughs> <laughs> yeah i expect this from him D- uh, done with Discord and all that, but we have been talking about Twilight intertwined with Discord. We should talk about Twilight. Because she is the star of the episode. She is the one that appears in every single scene. We don't leave her at any point. And mm. d- we haven't had an episode like this since Amending Fences. And <laughs> uh, actually, truth be told, we haven't had an episode, uh, dedicated episodes to these char- two characters like this since I think season four. Um, and it is, it, it's weird to find something new about Twilight. Very rarely we have seen her uh, acting jealous about her friends. We saw her acting suspicious to her brother. We saw her acting uh, uh, worried and hectic every time that she goes, Oh my God, I'm going tardy! But we never saw her acting in this, um, in this demeanor. Like having, having, a, having a direct mental breakdown because she thinks her friends are shunning her. And quite honestly, her friends are very, very happy shunning her. There, there is no, there is no remorse. There is no regret about what they're doing. It does wipe away her restive weekend. She never had a reason to be jealous before. In every episode from the past we've seen, she's just happy, worried, angry. Uh, what else? What other emotion are they like? Love. So, yeah, probably if there's an episode where it involves Flash Sentry and another mayor, she'll be jealous too. But yeah, ha! we're not gonna get that episode. Norman, 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 no, don't, don't, don't go there. <laughs> oh, don't I just Flash, did. <laughs> don't bring, don't, bl- don't bring Flash Sentry onto, onto this. Please, don't. Uh, no, but still, <laughs> but still. <laughs> Poor guy. Um, there's never um, been a reason for her to be jealous. And, well, now there is. I, but, I, uh, oh, go ahead, what? go ahead. On the, on the topic of her efforts to try and figure this out, would it have helped this episode if we'd gotten an account from each of the main six individually, each one painting a different picture? I can think of several cartoons that did this in the past, including Johnny Bravo. Oh, I love that one. As they try to describe an event, but each one has a different memory of it. Reminds me of that episode of uh, 
Alfred Hitchcock presents I Saw Everything, which is about several people reporting on a bank robbery and it's always the, it's never the same. It's always different. Something like that. Yep. So like Twilight ends with like five different accountings of the event. None of them match. And that would have been a good interesting episode though, but you needed more than 22 minutes. That did happen in the episode where they were describing about the scenario where there's a snake, no, a stick, no, a hose. The Twilight was trying to recreate the whole event in, uh, in, in that experiment. Only to get interrupted by Discord in a rather mean way. It's like, oh yeah, no, you cannot be here. You were not part of it, remember? You are breaking the experiment. Well, I know, it's a question too, so, hmm. That's the give and take on it. I don't agree with there's not enough time. Let's like, say Johnny Bravo, which only did like, I think, a 15 minute cartoon, did hmm. three accounts. It was very visually intensive, maybe very fast-paced, but still useful. Perhaps the writers are not used to writing that kind of that kind of heavy flashback, different kind of scenario. They think that it might be too constrained within the 22-minute range. You, yeah, you know what? As I was saying that, I don't think it will, it will fit. I was thinking, no, maybe it can. If you have so, sort of like Pinkie Pie-esque kind of like uh, animation spastic kind of thing, Use different yeah. art styles for each one of the segments. Like Applejack is all on apples. <laughs> Rainbow Dash is all like like a comic book. Pinkie Pie is like with real life cutouts. Always a uh, option, but it would have helped placate the audiences. Like, oh, are we going to find out? Uh, I still don't know what happened. Yeah. And here's something I mentioned before. The one scenario or the one scene that uh, they shut me down or shut my idea down was, hey... Twilight could time travel to see what happened. That will be cool. Yeah. Twilight say no. Okay. No time travel then. That is a little funny foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Time travel can mess things up. Uh. <laughs> Anybody who's here around who might be hearing this, yeah, don't pay attention to that. Oh, don't notice that bush. There is nothing behind the bush. Yeah. Wasn't she behind the bush? Yeah, she was behind the bush with some... Uh, some um, Binoculars. Oh god. We we never <laughs> mentioned in the previous episode where when she did pop up and spy on the main six. Like, oh god, that's just creepy. Uh at least she's keeping busy. She needs a new hobby. Also fun back to the future reference. Right around the, the time of the anniversary. True. Maybe that's why they delayed the, the second half of season five to make that reference. When it comes to the way that the main six are behaving, they they come across as somewhat oblivious. If not, maybe careless for their friend, don't you think? Well, they're, they're oblivious, which, yeah, sometimes friendships aren't perfect. They do kind of turn a blind eye at how Twilight's feeling and maybe are a little insensitive. But then once they pick up that she's feeling this way, they, they become support. Yeah. I will say at the end when they start explaining the moral to Twilight, it's like, ah, that's usually not my favorite way to get an Aesop across. It's better when the character realizes it of their own reflection rather than having someone tell it to them. Even if the signs are there, they won't get it. That's probably the part of the episode that gets to me the most. Not just the way that they are seeing, seeing the moral, but the circumstances in which they are delivering it. Because Twilight has to have that emotional breakdown in front of all of her friends, and Discord, and Spike, to the point that she starts tearing up. And I'm like, that's probably, that's my, my favorite part of the episode because I find, I find that very relatable. I have been in that situation before. I can absolutely relate to Twilight on that moment. But the way that the main six are reacting to that, they are almost careless. Twilight immediately does a 180. And the same thing that Discord was doing to her, they start doing to Discord. Which I thought that was so mean spirited and that was so uncalled for and so and funny, because it's it's like, oh, what if your friend decided to come here and make you drink a potion to like, oh yeah, that's that's actually not very good. That's terrible. That's uh, that you were acting like a very mean person right there. Why? Why thinking that your friends are being controlled by Discord? It's like she does have a precedent for that. She she does have a precedent, but as as Fluttershy puts it, and I am actually going to give Discord credit on this one. Uh, Discord's priorities have changed severely since season one, since season two. So like he doesn't want to take over the world anymore. He's uh, this is like going from um, 
going from trying to take down a government to just putting a firecracker inside inside somebody's uh, mailbox. So like this is, a petty, this is a mailbox. Yeah, yeah, like I, it was intentional. Uh, it, it it's a petty crime. If anything, it's meaningless. But the way that they end the episode, I know what they were going for. They were going for a for a bookends, like oh, we're gonna start the episode with this, we're gonna end the episode with this. It's like that's not the best because it's sending an unintentional message to the to the little kids. It's sending them the message that oh, if my friends are doing this to me, the best way that I can get back to my friends is to do the same thing to them. That was a bad idea, and I don't like it. That's why I consider this the lowest point of season five. Like I don't think it's an unwatchable episode, but that's bad. That's very weak. I, I think. The point of view here is almost similar to uh, the mysterious Meridwell. Yeah, and that episode like sucks too. Yeah. You can't engineer a lesson? The way that the lesson is kind of told, because, well, in Rainbow Dash's... Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. That they are giving, they are giving it to, back to her. In that, oh, she's not been humble and she's been boasting. Then to teach her a lesson, we're gonna be, um, uh, boastful and we're gonna be boasting as well. But the way they did that was really mean. But this one, they're just careless. That's the difference. The main five were an unwitting accomplices in Discord's little pitch. It's funny, Princess Spike still is less enjoyable for me than this one. Because I guess in Princess Spike, they're trying to say, look at these characters, they're so awesome, no, we're not going to show you. Whereas this one, okay, we won't show you what happened, but here the characters are on full display. And I just like I, I think that actually works. We are on a lot about the main well, Twilight and Discord. What about the rest? Like the rest of the main five. What about them? Well, we didn't even we didn't even mention that Sekora makes an appearance in this episode. Talk I, about I, her potion. I was just about to ask about that because uh, Sekora, this is always just funny. Here she is in the opening scene, uh, the opening credits style sequence. She's done diddly squat since season four opener. She suddenly become just a magic potion dispenser. She had a cameo in a slice of life with little to no consequence to the epi- no no consequence to the episode whatsoever. We will see her before the series end. The season ends, of course, in a in yet another cameo, not even in the same timeline. And there, there you go. The most useful thing she did. You're right. It was like two years ago. <laughs> But still, I do like the interaction that she has with Spike. Spike's asks, okay, if that's the potion, what's the pot for? Zakura's pan of feng shui, what can you say? <laughs> she bought that pot at Ikea. <laughs> it ties the room so well together. It does. You know, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Zakura is a teacher. She's the closest thing the main six have ever had to a mentor. Twilight's got Celestia. Yeah. But Zakura taught them all lessons about looking beyond themselves. Or opening themselves up to uh, to other ideas, and she taught Twilight in a uh, magic tool. I would really like her to be more of a mentor. That's something that's missing from this show. The main six are learning life lessons, but they never seem to learn it from their seniors. I feel like that's a weakness. Well, we just have to wait and see what they do for season six, because well, if they're anything like us, smart people who knows how to write stories, they'll probably think of something up. For Sakura, for season six. I'm not holding my breath because, you know, we just finished season five and they haven't taken advantage of this. I appreciate that you're including us as as smart as the show writers or vice versa, but uh, I have no idea. I can't read other people's minds. No, we cannot, we cannot be that, we cannot be that, uh, presumptuous to try and and, and guess what they are thinking. Oh, we can guess, but they mean, I wouldn't even go that far. I wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't even guess. It's always fun to guess, but it won't do it. The closest thing we got to a guessing game was, hey, we got to see Big Mac talk, but it's not what we wanted. Uh, we didn't talk about the main six, you're right, unless you want to consider that uh, a small uh, discussion uh, enough to talk about them, I mean. Well, what could we talk about them? They're, they're just careless in this episode. They, they, they are absolutely careless. They don't... It's not that... I'm, I'm not going to pull uh, out of character because that's really, that's ridiculous. I don't believe in the... I don't believe in that term. Really? Because from what I see is that they're in character because they're just laughing and having fun with Discord, which is kind of a out of left field kind of scenario for Twilight because they never... Except for Fluttershy... The rest of the other four have never been in good terms with Discord. 
they're just guarded and now they're just laughing and having fun, like out of nowhere. Which is what I actually enjoy about this episode, uh, that they finally shed that, oh, we, we don't trust you and oh, we've never forgiven you. And granted, they become a little more suspicious by the end. Then one orange joke later, they're all friends again. <laughs> I'm not blaming the main six for the way that they are behaving. And they definitely are not acting out of character. If they were acting out of character, then by the end of the episode, they wouldn't have been, you know, the, the, they wouldn't have redeemed everyone and like go back to to, 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 to be the way they are. They wouldn't be caring about Twilight. They would have just kept going. The way that they are acting is not out of meanness. It, it comes out of, uh, not having all the information. And they don't have all the information because Twilight doesn't want to let in on what's going through her mind. She doesn't want to sincere and open up to her friends. And it's not until she does that they realize, oh, damn, we might have been a bit too harsh with you. I will say, after Twilight tries to uh, free them, Applejack's little jab at her when Discord reappears is like, wow, that's some bitter apple right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn apples. Like I said, they are acting, and I thought I wasn't going to be defending the the main six on this one, because when I watched this episode, they really they really got me up the walls. They didn't. I, I wasn't very happy with the way that they were behaving. But looking at at it from this perspective, yeah, they are acting out of not knowing what's happening through Twilight's mind. And Twilight was a bit of an idiot for not telling her friends and not being sincere with her friends and being just straight up, hey, this is what's going through my mind. This is what happened. What's happening to me? Because I'm going to say this right now, I have been in this situation before, in a very similar situation. I'm not talking about the destiny one, guys. I'm not talking about you, but uh, you know, how dare you leave me out of your destiny talk, uh, a game that I don't care about. I'm joking. <laughs> you will uh, fear evil, Bob. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> evil Bob. Uh, you cannot fear something you don't care about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> True. But the thing is that I too have been like outside of my Skype groups for a good couple of weeks because I have been busy with convention preparation. I have been busy with real life work or I just needed some isolation and oh god, I'm not going to focus on Skype today. I am just going to draw. And I end up like making five drawings or something like that. I come back and everybody is just talking with themselves, shunning me to the side. And I'm like, hey guys, what's going on? Oh, nothing. We just had, oh, we had an awesome game of Halo. Uh, or we were playing cards against humanity. Ah, uh, you couldn't get it. You, you should have been there. You should have seen it. Oh, we didn't have a screen caps on. And like, you can back read on, on, on it and all that. And, but you feel like you have been left out and you're like, oh no, I missed, I missed on something. And I'm not sure if this is Twilight. This is mostly me speaking about me, but it feels like you left, you were left out on something and it's entirely your fault. The way that Twilight behaves and the way that it's twi Twilight is acting and everything, the way I see it is I think she considers herself guilty and responsible for missing on this. And it's not just because she's the, friends, uh, the princess of friendship, but because she feels like she's making a disservice to her friends. And that fear and paranoia grows in, into her making them drink the Kool-Aid at the end of the episode. Well, true that on feeling responsible and whatnot. But here's the thing. We make the decision ourselves. We chose not to go. We chose not to participate. So for us, feeling guilty, feeling bad about it, okay, warranted. I do feel bad for not going to conventions. But hey, I was busy. I had something else to do. So okay, I feel bad. But ah, uh, and just say la vie. What can you do, right? Accept it, move on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's no point on dwindling on it. There's no point on latching on to what might have been. Like Spike said, you're jealous, just admit it, and let's move on. Yeah, we're all grown-ups here. You know that, Silver knows that, and I know that, I think. That's fine. Kids and Twilight in this episode don't know that. They don't necessarily have that information. And the way that they are delivering it in this one, I think it's very flawed. The problem with this episode is what it ends on. It starts with Discord and the main six telling Twilight, oh, you should have been there, you, you wouldn't understand. And it ends with the main six and Twilight telling Discord, oh, you should have been there, you wouldn't understand otherwise. It's like, you cannot deliver a moral with the same means that you were using to set up the moral. You usually have to come to the other end. You know what I mean? You, 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 you follow what I'm saying. I might not be explaining myself very well. Yeah, I, I do understand. Like, you don't repeat the same mistake again to teach a lesson, you're not really teaching it well. You're doing it wrong. 
I just like to say that I am by no means a grown up here. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, the way that I say it is like, okay, extreme example. Imagine if there is two people and one goes to the other and they shoot them in the arm. And he's like, you shot me. I'm going to shoot you back. That's exactly what this episode did. That's not good. That's not how you do a moron. That's not how you teach a lesson. That's how you teach somebody to be bitter and vindictive. That's why I don't like this episode at all. Not a good way to end a lesson. Like Grandma says, an eye for an eye makes everyone blind. I saw it as Discord. They sort of turned Discord's thing around at him, but then Twilight offered the orange to say no hard feelings. It's a confusing way that that it delivers. It's like... You, 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 and I, and everyone else, I think we can read onto that. But what about the people that don't really focus on symbolism, or the people that don't follow on the non non scripted messages? I think it was you, Silver, who was talking about unintentional messages in uh, in cartoons and kids' cartoons. Yeah. Uh, I think th- yeah, this is giving an, the unintentional message that if you want to. If you want to get back, to, you can get back to your friends if you do the same thing that you were, that they were doing to you. Like th- this is the right thing to do. You can do this. It's like, I don't like it. I I think this is badly put together. Fair enough. I'm not trying to dismiss or or say that it's a legitimate thing to take away from this or to be concerned about this. Unintentional messages do come across. I will say that I still think Princess Spike was the low point for me. This one is at least making a little bit of progress for characters and at least having them front and center. We are not all that far apart. I'd say this is, this is the lower, the lower point of the season for me, but Princess Spike might be the second lowest point of the season for me. (laughs) They are one right after the other. I feel so bad for Neil Dusado. I I have nothing against the guy. Uh, He's a newcomer to the show. He has to get used to the flow and everything. I definitely want to see another episode of him. I, I consider myself a tolerant guy when it comes to uh, watching episodes by newcomers, or else I wouldn't be watching episodes written by Meriwether Williams after the mysterious murder well. So, yeah, I want to see more of this guy. I want to see what else he has to offer. But, boy, it was a rocky debut, and it's an even rockier follow-up. Well, I guess we just have to wait for season six, then. Yes, wait. Oh, yeah. I, 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 like I said, we're in the hiatus. It's so empty. Yeah, all right. So I'm very comfortable leaving the discussion of the episode right there because I don't think we have any more any anything else to talk about. So would you guys want to give final thoughts or would you want to end it right there? Final thoughts, then. Final thoughts. What can I say? This was an episode where it leaves you with more questions than it answers. And while it's nice to see Discord interacting with the main six, the main six kind of getting over past grievances... It's a winding road with a lot of frustrations along the way, but not as satisfying a payoff. And the fact that it has to tell you the moral uh, outright usually is a sign that you you haven't been able to construct a decent parable. And that's frustrating. So not the lowest for me, but definitely not not anything I'd point to as a highlight of of the show. Although I shall never get tired of hearing John Delancey. He is the one true voice actor. Oh, no, you're not on the KP train, are you? Well, I would say I'm on a parallel track. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I am on that same train as on that same train as well. We didn't talk about John Delancey, though, but there is no need to talk about him. His talent permeates through everything he touches. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> That's about it. Like, what can he say? It's, I wish we had him all season six. Okay, what about you, Norman? What, what, what were your final thoughts? I like this episode, but... They could have explained a bit more, or they could have done it a bit well, a little bit of polish here, polish there, but it's told rather junky at some parts, but yeah, I'm happy with what I got, but I wish they could have done better. They shut down my idea for time traveling, which is kind of cool, but other than that... Give it to the season finale. Uh-huh. You're going to have fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I like it. It's not the best, but I like it. Well... For me, well, you can you can really get it. It's like a, a bit of a waste of the talent of John Delancey for an episode that wasn't all that well written. Uh, like this is definitely the low point of season five, but I wouldn't deem it unwatchable. Like usually, when an episode is bad for me, I just don't go back to watch it. See Wonderbolts Academy, Dragon Quest, putting your hoof down. 
I don't think this is that bad of an episode. I think this is just mediocre at best. Mediocre at best. <laughs> Uh, but it's still, I don't know, there is still some enjoyment watching John Delancey being Bob Ross, I mean Discord being Bob Ross. It's difficult to differentiate the two, they're so similar. Like Han Solo and... I'm sorry, there is no reason for this, only Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is an enjoyment about watching Twilight, uh, having a mental breakdown, if anything, because it's so relatable, I have been there. So it 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 hurts, but it hurts it, it hurts in the right way. And have a lot of problems with the way that they deliver them, deliver the moral. Like I think we can all agree on that one. The way that they deliver the moral is clunky at best and insulting at worst. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't think it's it's definitely the low point for me. It gets better after this one. We should definitely keep moving to another episode. True. We're almost at the end. We're almost at the end. It's like we only have like what two episodes, three episodes left. Let me check the wiki. Yeah, we have four episodes left. 23, 24, and the season two-parter. The finale, the two-parter finale. Well, uh, I think this is this will be it for this week. Uh, shall we talk about what we're, going to, what we're going to be discussing next week? Please do. Oh, my gosh. If you thought talking about uh, what about Discord sent you to Tizzy, our next conversation. Uh, we waited for a long time for this one. We're going to be talking about Siege of the Crystal Empire. We're going to be going back to the comics. It's a four-parter, a four-issue parter, written by Jeremy Whitley and drawn by Andy Cook. No, by uh, Andy Price, not Andy Cook. I just made a shipping name right there. <laughs> Why? <laughs> written by Jeremy Whitley, drawn by Andy Price. Oh my gosh, and color, with colors by Helen Breckel, of course. Oh my gosh, but that one is definitely going to be another story for another time, or times. I think we're going to need like two or three episodes to talk about that one. Boy, do we have a lot to say about those comics. That will be left for another episode of the MBS Show Reviews. Until then, this has been James Skork. I am Norman Sanzo. And I'm the Slayer of Evil Bob. Hey, down with Bob. I still don't know what's going on. My friends don't like me. I'm going to go drink the potion right now. (laughs) Come on, drink. (laughs) I'm not drinking your Kool-Aid. See you guys another time. Yes, you drink drink the Kool-Aid. It's good. Never! See you guys another time. Have a good one, everybody. See ya. Adios.